Good morning, my name is Guy and welcome to another edition of Hand of Power. We had uh, a lot of good suggestions and one of the suggestions Mitch and I chose for this next segment is sliding dovetails. Um, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do a sliding dovetail and also what Mitch calls a housed dovetail, which is a half sliding dovetail. It really depends on what you want to call it. Let me show you these joints. I've already done a sample and I'll explain to you their uses and how these are going to benefit you in your shop. Well, the first of these joints is a sliding dovetail. What I have is instead of butt joining two pieces or putting a dado in here and sliding this in for, for a horizontal cross member, the big advantage here is that we've got some mechanical strength. So I've created a dovetail on the end of this and there's a corresponding dovetail here. When you put these two together like that, what you have is not only something that will fit in there, give it a lot of um, glue surface, but also give it some mechanical strength to prevent these pieces from coming apart on you over time. Now the second joint is a housed or half through sliding dovetail. And on here what you can see is I've only got the dovetail on one side and there's a corresponding dovetail on this side. So when I put these together, we get very close to the same joint that we got with the through sliding dovetail. Now myself, if I'm doing a horizontal member, I prefer this joint. I think it looks a little bit more elegant. Um, it's really six of one, half dozen of the other. But I'm going to show you how to do both. And this is very limited to what you need. I'm actually going to do it with just two router bits. One's a half inch, and this is actually a 5 8 inch, uh, 8 degree dovetail bit. And this is 3 quarter inch slot, stock. Let me show you what I need to do to set this up on the router table. So I've got this bit chucked up in my uh, router table. Again, this is a 5 8 inch bit. And uh, I like to use these Craig setup bars. You could also use brass setup bars. You could also use a drill bit to do this. But basically what I want is I want it about 3 eighths of an inch above the surface of the table. So I've got my fence moved over. You know, in this case, it's just an arbitrary distance for demonstration purposes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through this way. Now, you could use a miter gauge, I guess. It's just easier to use a, a big piece. I'm using a big piece of plywood here. That'll keep that square to the blade, and it'll also prevent some tear out on the back edge. So, I just need to make this cut. It's a very simple through cut. So what I'm left here, we've got some fuzzies here, just going to clean that up with a little sandpaper. But as you can see, I've got a, just a through dovetail that goes all the way through from one side to the other. Now I've got that dovetail dado, whatever you want to call it, cut in the one piece. I need to cut the corresponding dovetail in this so it fits into that slot. Now, what I know is I've got three quarter inch material here, and I've also got a five eighths inch bit here. So I know I have an eighth inch left over, so that's a sixteenth of an inch. So I've rotated my bit around until I know that's it. It's extended about as far as I think it should be. I'm just going to set that at zero, and then I'm going to back this off about a sixteenth of an inch. Actually, I'm going to go a little short of that because I want to creep up on this. I don't want to cut this all at one pass. Um, I want to make sure that I have a nice tight joint. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one first. So that first pass, I'm not even close. I'm going to move the fence back a 32nd of an inch and see how far that gets me. Well, after about three, I think maybe four passes a side, let's say just bumping it in a little bit at a time, this is the fit that I've achieved. Now, I can put these in by hand, but it's still pretty tight. There's no wiggle to this at all. This is important. If you make these too tight and you put glue in there, you will never get these together. Those wood fibers will swell and you're going to end up pounding the crap out of it to try to get it together. If you're going to do anything, put the joint together. If it's pretty tight, and put just a little glue on the end that's actually going to be showing out or the show face and then put it in to make sure that you keep that flush to the face. 
So that is a sliding dovetail. Very easy to do if you know the steps. The next thing I'm going to do is the housed sliding dovetail or the through half sliding dovetail thing. House, housed sliding dovetail, we're going to go with that. So I've got my half inch straight cutting bit set up in my router table. This is at the three, same 3 8 inch height I had before. I did slow the bit speed down a bit because I am concerned about burning on this. So I'm going to set the fence over again, just an arbitrary number for now. And I'm going to cut the first of two passes on this. That's after the first pass with the half inch spiral cutting bit. The next cut I need to make on this is with the dovetail bit. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my router and then I'll show you how I mark this piece up to set up for that second cut with the dovetail bit. So what I've got here is I've got the piece that's going to be joined into here. This is the groove I just cut. Now what I want to make sure is that I do not exceed on this dovetail the width of this piece of wood otherwise it's going to look like hell. So I'm going to measure that from reality. So I'm just going to butt that up in there. I'm just going to make a tick mark right here where the width of that is. Now this piece is going to fit in here like this and I need to make that dovetail about like that. So that's going to come to about a sixteenth of an inch from this far edge. So. I need to put, again, put this in the router table and I will show you how I get this, the height on this set and also the width set on this. So I've got that bit in my router table again and it's actually higher than that dado I just cut. So I'm just going to lower it down little by little until it just clears. Now to set the distance away from the fence that I need, I want to make sure that this side of the bit does not cut into this side of that groove. So I'm just going to move it over like that, making sure that I clear that other side, and right there, I'm just going to bring my fence up, like that, and I'll lock it into place, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this. So the second pass was made on this edge right here. As you can see, there's just a slight angle, and that's going to be more than enough than when I create the, the mating piece that goes in here to lock all this in place. Let me show you how I set up to do the second piece on this joint. So after I've got the groove cut for that, the procedure to cut the mating piece is a lot like the last one. Just want to get where that bit is, the leading point back it up a little, almost a sixteenth of an inch. Now I just need to make sure that I cut this only on one side. Well this one took about five passes for me to dial that in. And again, this is the fit I'm looking for. I just use hand pressure without a hammer to get it in there. We've got a nice tight joint. Uh, a little bit of glue on the end here when I do assemble it and this will stay nice and tight to the front. So here again are the two joints. It's a sliding dovetail where I've got the angle on both sides and that's locking it into a mating dado. And this one house sliding dovetail. Again this is just on one side and then that goes into the mating piece like that. Well there you have it. It's how to make a sliding dovetail or a house sliding dovetail using power tools, limited power tools, router table and two router bits. Very easy to do, very strong if you're going to be doing cabinet work. Uh, both of these are pretty an essential skill to, to master. Uh, as always I'm going to leave a link to Mitch's video over here and please give us more suggestions. Uh, you can leave a suggestion on Twitter using the hashtag hammer power or please leave a comment in the comments below and uh, we'll get to it hopefully sooner or later. Again, thanks so much for watching and have fun.